If these elections were conducted on the economy, what would you tell Sierra Leoneans? What would you tell the voters in view of the harsh economic reality? Well, I will say to Sierra Leoneans, when I came in, I inherited a very bad economy. One that was characterized by corruption, one that was characterized by high debt, a low growth rate, um, 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 poor public management, uh, financial management. We were considered the most corrupt country, one of the most corrupt countries in the world. But if you, uh, a, a year later, we had almost reduced um, um, inflation to a single digit. Financial management was so good that we were able to launch the free quality education in less than a year from the loopholes that we were able to close. We were able to go back into the program with the IMF, which had shunned us and left this country because of the same corruption. And before the APC left, they had already stated that we are in austerity as a nation. That was what I inherited with nothing in the coffers. And within a year, we were able to impact on very expensive national but needed programs which have um, survived and thrived and succeeded today. So this is what I will say to Sri Adinians. The economy is tough. I can, I can understand your pain. Things are expensive. But I want to say it is not in, only in Sweden. The world is going through turbulent times, and we are an integral part of the world. We cannot escape this. Having said that, we as a, as, as a government have done everything to cushion the effects of that global headwind, which we can even bigger nations with stronger economies have not been able to resist. But we have taken away most of the taxes to make sure that you don't feel the, 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 the weight of it. But it, it, it's, it, it, it's what I would call a poly crisis, started by uh, COVID, uh, exacerbated by uh, supply chain disruptions, and of course, uh, compounded by, by the uh, Ukraine-Russia uh, uh, war. So the world is in turmoil, and uh, because of the interconnectedness of the world, and because we are so reliant on exported goods, even onion we import into this, uh, imp imported goods, we are definitely facing the wrong end of this whole uh, uh, saga. And therefore, I just want Sierra Leoneans to know that we have done great but we are going against a very serious international uh, crisis that has diminished the effects of what we have done. But even with that, I want to say the economy has been handled properly. And that is why the IMF would come back to Sri Lanka, And that is why they are still with us. And um, we have gone through the crisis without uh, scarcity of essential commodities because we have put in place serious measures to make sure that our people do not run out. Yes, it is expensive because we are not producing it. They are, most of what we are consuming are being imported from different parts of the world where things are extremely difficult, where freight has been very expensive, and so we have this uh, gamut of factors that have just been out of control. I will appeal to Sri Adinians that with the commitment we have shown it is unfortunate that we have an international situation that has basically reversed the gains. But I want you to know that when we talk about education, which is laying the, the foundation for uh, sustainable development in this country, we are regarded to have made the greatest effort under the most difficult circumstances. Health. We have just been uh, informed that we have reduced maternal and infant mortality rate. By, six, by a whopping 60%. And the, as I speak to you, the WHO is here not only to commend us, but to also ask us to teach other parts of the world uh, who, uh, who are struggling with that. This is the biggest jump, and it is so phenomenal. And the thing that this quantum leap cannot happen without policies and good governance. We have consistently passed the score of corruption, the, this, uh, uh, the corruption index as far as the uh, MCC is concerned and other 
other institutions are concerned. Which means from nine, uh, 2018, when I took over, we, we took over over um, when we, the Australian was scoring 47%. Today, we are in the 80s. This is progress. So, in the midst of all that is happening, we are making progress. But we have the economies of the world, even the biggest economies, even the strongest, are struggling. Who are we not to struggle? But that is not my excuse. I am working to make sure that I push in the effect of what is happening around the world so that Syrian unions can at least cope and have a piece of bread and bread and butter. Finally, from me, uh, you spoke about the human capital development, namely education, when you were campaigning five years ago. What is your big platform this time around? Um, the platform remains the same. Education is part of the human capital. And when we talk about human capital, the human being cannot exist without good health, food security, and in the 21st century and going forward, sound education. We have, because of limited resources and time, and with all what is happening around the world, concentrated heavily on education. This time around, while we consolidate the gains in education, we are now going to shift to food security, agriculture and food security. And this is meant not only to provide food for us, but also to serve as the engine of economic growth, broad-based development, because more than 60% of our people are involved in agriculture, and therefore boosting activities in that area is actually going to lead to helping more than 60% of the population. So that is the challenge, and I invite all Suredinians to join me in that forward move. Mr. President, presidential candidates, are you prepared to face Samoa Kamara in a presidential debate? I've faced him before, and the records are there. I'll face him again if there is a debate. But I'm not ready to go back to 1961. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.